Okay, so uh, I'm going to do something similar to what I've done before, but with a slightly more complex shape. Um, and this time uh, I'm going to do an inner and an outer um, surface and cut between them. So basically, you know, I've created two circles on different planes, I've lofted it together. I've then removed both ends, so I've got a surface. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to offset those surfaces. Uh, the first one I'm going to offset by that 0.9 and that's the distance that the uh, internals will be away from that outer shell to ensure that there's that gap so that I end up with that um, vase mode printing experience. Uh, and the other one, the inner surface is just going to be exactly that. It's going to be the inner surface of the finished product. Now I need to manipulate this stuff a little bit, so that's uh, 0.9 offset, as you can see I've um, extended that a little bit um, and that's so that when I start creating my cutting surfaces um, that I can make them larger than the shape that I'm cutting, um, but I want to ensure that I cut them full length, otherwise all I'm doing is putting a line in it and that's not what I want. So I'm just throwing together, you know, my usual 0.08 uh, cutting surface. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Um, I'm going to use the pattern tool to place um, my 0.8 cutting surfaces, sorry, cutting bodies uh, inside uh, the shape that I'm, I'm creating. So I just need to line it up so it runs through the body um, kind of around its axis. I also just want to check to make sure that it doesn't extend past that cutting body that I've created. All right, so let's get the pattern tool. So yeah, I select the body and then I select the axis that I want to create those on and then I can just increase the number um, to increase you know, the, number of, uh, com the number of bodies uh, that I'm creating within that pattern. As you can see, it's pretty cool, it does a pretty good job. Now I'm naming one slicer because I want one of them to come all the way through uh, that body so that I have a way to get in to do the internal uh, side of it when I'm printing it. Now what I need to do now is I need to return uh, the surface, those surfaces to a body. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm extending them, the inner surface, uh, and it'll actually be used to cut the other surface at a later stage. Um, but I'm patching both ends and then stitching it together, which then returns it to a body. You'll notice there's a body 29 there, which is that outer, that outer body that I just created. Um, I'm now gonna do the same thing to that inner body, and that inner body is gonna become my cutting tool. So once again, uh, I patch that outer surface at both ends, and this one has just a little piece in the on the edge there, and then I just stitch them together. And the great thing about the stitch tool in uh, Fusion 360 is, you know, it tells you exactly which surface, uh, which which area that body you're trying to stitch together isn't connected. And it shows you that in red, and as soon as you click on it, it will then become green, so you know it's good to go. So once again, I've just used. Uh, that smaller body which was that uh, created off that I think it was a 10 mil offset I did in the end um, to cut out uh, that outer body that I'm going to keep for the part. 
So as you can see here, I've just added in all those bodies I'm going to use to create the support structure and the cutting template I'm going to use, which is that 0.9 offset, uh, isn't quite long enough. So I'm just going to extend that before I go any further, uh, otherwise they won't cut all the way through. Just checking to make sure I'm happy with all those. They all look good. So now what I want to do is, all except for that slicer, I want to cut it with that 0.9 offset body. If this isn't making sense yet, it will soon. So now I get rid of all of the bits that were outside of that. And the last thing I need to do with uh, the tool that I'm going to use to create um, those 0.08 cuts is I just want to add them all together so that when I do my split body, uh, it's just, I, I, I'm only doing one. I'm not doing like six, eight, 12, whatever the number is. So as you can see here, this should give you an idea of what I'm, what I'm looking to achieve. I now have that outer surface, which is gonna be, you know, let's call it a fuselage. And I've got that body that I'm gonna to use to create um, all those little 0.08 uh, cuts into it, which will then provide that structure when it's printed. If we just really quickly do our section analysis, uh, we can see that, uh, and I'm going the wrong way there, that, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. You can see that there's that small gap between those cuts that went in, all except for one. There's one that comes all the way out, which will allow the printhead to actually travel inside. So let's, let's throw that out to the slicer. And let's have a look at the print preview. If we zoom in, you can see that, yep, there's that little gap um, between all those support bits and pieces, except for one, uh, which allows me to get to the outer shell to print it. So, you know, I'm conforming with that whole vase mode, surface mode idea. So there we go, we're now on the outer shell. And as you can see, there's that little gap between all the other pieces. Runs around the outside, comes back to where it started. So, this is one of the good things about working with bodies as opposed to surfaces. Surfaces can get quite antiquated if you want to make simple changes. I've decided I want to put a platform in there because I want to put some electronics in there. So what I've done, I've just rolled back my timeline uh, to just before where I cut. That body with that template that I created. So remember, I cut to the outer surface with uh, a body, sorry. Remember I cut that body with another body that I created and the other body had a 10 mil offset, which is what I wanted my inner surface to be, 10 mil away from the outer surface. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create another body. And this is basically just gonna be a box. And I'm gonna cut the bottom off my template which means I'll end up with a little shelf in the end result. So I want to extrude this, but I want to join the original piece and the extrusion together. So what I want to do is turn off that other body so that they don't all join together. And that's good to go. I can now just cut that off the bottom. And you'll see in a sec, if you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, uh, what will happen. Just cleaning it up a little bit. There's a few bits and pieces kicking around. Um, sometimes it's worthwhile uh, not removing objects this far through the timeline, especially if you're gonna roll back, um, because if you accidentally delete something that it relies on later, you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble. So I'm just rolling the timeline forward, and as you can see, I've rolled past that cut. And what I've ended up with is, when you look at it, I have a nice little shelf on the inside there, a nice little flat shelf as opposed to that curved surface that I had before. So if we throw this guy out to the slicer, 
there you go you can see there's that nice little um, shelf in there So as I mentioned in the previous video, if you come up with a really good idea or another method or something that you know just works or is simpler than some of the stuff that I'm doing, either drop something in the comments or if you've done a video on it, just drop the video in the comments as well. Alrighty, thanks for watching.